This video is one of two that are looking at the balance of payments, the current account, and why the exchange rate matters. So the balance of payment measures the financial transactions between New Zealand and the rest of the world. So money in and money out. It's made up of three accounts, which if we added together should balance out to zero. The current account, the capital account, and the financial account are those three accounts. But for the purpose of NCA level three, where our focus is on the current account. So the current account measures New Zealand's short-term transactions with the rest of the world. It's made up of four parts. So the balance of goods, which is pretty simple, the value of our exports minus the value of our imports in terms of goods. The balance of services, same thing. Services we provide that are paid for minus the value of what we pay for as New Zealanders. Plus the balance on income and the balance on current transfers. So a little bit more detail about those last couple. So balance of services, exported services are any services provided by a New Zealand business but paid for from overseas funds. So when tourists come to New Zealand and pay for hotel accommodation and things like that, that's an exported service. And when you go overseas and pay for your accommodation over there or a tour, that's an imported service. The balance on income is the one that seems to trick most people up. And it's money, it's income traveling from one country to another, usually in the form of dividends and interest. So if you've got um, investment in shares overseas, when those shares pay out dividends and those dividends are returned to New Zealand, that's an inflow in the balance of income. When overseas investors put their money in New Zealand bank accounts and earn interest and that interest is transferred overseas, that's an outflow on the balance of income. So if you just remember, focus on dividends, interest, profits, that's money in and money out for that part. Um, the final one, the balance of current transfers, is simply money being transferred for no exchange. And that's typically things like foreign aid. So when New Zealand um, provides aid to Pacific Island countries and so on, um, when there are natural disasters, current transfers will um, account for the money that's being sent there. Okay, so moving on, we'll come back to that. But the current account is our measure of how the economy is doing. Remember that our macroeconomic goal is for the current account to be balanced. Um, balanced means it works out to be zero. Inflows equal outflows. But the exchange rate is really important for that. If you watch the news, um, especially the business news, they're often talking about the exchange rate and what's happening with it. And the reason for that is it has a really big impact on the value of our exports and how much we pay for our imports. And so it affects exporter income and also affects that current account balance. So the exchange rate itself is, is just a, a trading number. It's how much one currency can be swapped for another. So for example, if one New Zealand dollar is worth Aussie 0.90, that means one New Zealand dollar will buy 90 Australian cents or 90 Australian cents will buy one New Zealand dollar. Remember, we have different currencies, different exchange rates for pretty much every currency, particularly the US dollar, the euro, and so on. The big ones for New Zealand are exactly in terms of our main trading partners. So the US dollar and the euro, in particular, they're like the international trading currencies. Also, the Australian dollar and the Chinese currency as well would be important. So the exchange rate for each currency is determined by the foreign exchange market, which is and it's just demand and supply, like our usual economic models. This is not a place. There is no foreign exchange market place. It all happens online. Banks trade currencies with each other, and demand and supply determine um, what the exchange rate is going to be. Notice a couple of changes with our demand and supply graph. So we have the exchange rate on the vertical axis. Um, we've got PNZ, SNZ, DNZ, and so on to denote the, that we're talking about the New Zealand dollar here as opposed to just supply and demand in a typical market. So suppose demand for the New Zealand dollar increases for some reason, then it's just like a normal demand and supply graph. We get, end up with a higher exchange rate and a greater quantity being um, provided in the market. At the end of the day, we don't worry so much about the quantity as we do about the exchange rate, because the exchange rate is what has the big impact in our economy. So what will impact demand for New Zealand dollars? 
the first thing you've got to get your head around is demand comes from people with other currencies who want New Zealand dollars. It's not you deciding you want some money off your mum and dad. It is people wanting to change their currency for New Zealand money. So this comes from overseas investors wanting to put their money into New Zealand companies and banks. Um, pretty simple. If they want to do that, they need New Zealand money. Overseas buyers of our exports. So obviously if you're in Australia and you're buying New Zealand goods, you need New Zealand money to pay for it. Overseas tra tourists coming to New Zealand, they need to swap their money to New Zealand dollars or to pay for things. Um, there's a mistake on the last second to last bullet point. New Zealand exporters, they're often actually paid in overseas currency. They might be paid in US dollars. So they might need to switch that currency for New Zealand dollars. So they will be part of that demand. And finally, migrants coming to New Zealand. Again, they want to change their currency for New Zealand money so that they can settle here. Supply of New Zealand dollars is almost the exact reverse. The sources are kind of like the same. So these are people with New Zealand dollars who need overseas currencies. So again, it's not you with money in your bank wanting to go down to the dairy and buy something that you're not supplying New Zealand dollars in that context. It is people with New Zealand dollars who want overseas currency. If you are going overseas for a, a trip and you go to the bank and you change your money for that currency, then you are part of the supply of New Zealand dollars. So who does that come from? So again, investors who've got money in New Zealand who want to invest overseas. They obviously need to switch their money out for that overseas currency. New Zealand importers, they need to pay in overseas dollars, so they will need to switch that money out again, so they will supply New Zealand dollars to get that overseas currency. When any of us travel overseas, we need overseas currency, so we will supply New Zealand dollars. And finally, people migrating out of New Zealand will need overseas currency, so they too will supply New Zealand dollars. So what are the key things affecting demand and supply for the New Zealand dollar? These are really important. So number one is interest rates here and overseas. There are investors all around the world who chase the best returns they can get for their money. So when New Zealand interest rates are high compared to overseas, they put their money in New Zealand, so they'll de demand New Zealand dollars. Um, if our interest rates go down, they'll take their money out of New Zealand. The strength of the New Zealand economy is really important. Um, again, if our economy is performing well, then overseas investors want to invest in New Zealand and New Zealand companies in particular. And if we're doing well, people want to migrate to New Zealand. So again, they'll want New Zealand money. It also affects our demand for imports. If the economy is doing well, then we tend to buy more imports and so we will supply more New Zealand dollars to um, pay for those imports. Um, that's really important. So when we had a recession back in 2008, 2009, demand for imports plummeted. So the strength of the New Zealand economy is important for that. And lastly, the strength of the new overseas economy or overseas economies matters as well. Um, because the better off our overseas countries are doing, the more they will demand our exports. And again, the better overseas economies are doing, the more likely it is that New Zealanders will want to migrate overseas. At the moment, when New Zealand is performing better than most other countries, people tend to stay in New Zealand, so we've got less migration. So these are pretty much the key things that will affect the demand and supply for New Zealand dollars in the foreign exchange market. So the next video will look at appreciation and depreciation when the exchange rate goes up and down and why that really matters.